Hey, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us here tonight on 20 Sides to Every Story. This is sort of a, a start to Princes of the Apocalypse uh, that we are trying to convert into um, the Greyhawk setting for our community campaign. So uh, we're going to get started here in just a little bit. Um, but before we do... Just a few channel announcements before we get rolling with the game. Um, if this is your first time stopping in to check us out, please do uh, give us a follow. And uh, let me see, I gotta navigate to my Twitch here. Uh, come and join us in our Discord channel. I'm gonna pop the link to that here in the chat. Um, jump in there um, because this campaign, uh, this game, and all the games that our uh, 20 Sides DMs are putting together as a part of our community campaign are games that you could join yourself. So the best way to figure out how to do that would just be to jump into our Discord server and right in the lobby just let us know that you're interested in playing in a game and you want to learn how to sign up and make a character and all that. And uh, the helpful folks there will uh, point you in the right direction to, to doing that. This... Uh, it's kind of an interesting game that we're playing here tonight because we've got uh, some we've got at least one character that just kind of started up with us maybe a couple months ago and then two characters that um, progressed through I guess we'll call it a season last season's community campaign when we were doing Temple of Elemental Evil and we just kind of pushed on through and decided to add another layer on top of that so it's kind of the the old world and the new world colliding a little bit here so uh, that gives you kind of an, I guess, understanding of how long our campaigns can go. We, we've got things that go on for multiple years. So um, if you've been struggling to find a group uh, <laughs> that can meet on a consistent basis, uh, jump in our Discord and we'll hook you up. Um, I think I just heard a, a woo there. Hey, uh, Jeff, thank you for the subscription. Four months. So that's probably an accurate marker of when you started up. It was about maybe about four months ago. Um, so... Uh, the other thing that I want to announce here or talk about a little bit is we are doing Extra Life again this year. This will be our fifth year doing Extra Life. So um, I'm doing it a little differently. I don't think I've ever... I don't believe I've ever done an Extra Life game on the official Extra Life day. We've traditionally done our Extra, extra Life effort. It has usually been during the week of Thanksgiving, but... Um, I have, a, I have a newborn, so we're probably going to do more family stuff during the week of Thanksgiving this year. So decided to give it a try, and we're going to do a 12-hour... We're going to do the original Ravenloft module using uh, Old School Essentials. So that should be kind of interesting, fun. We'll do a 12-hour stream of that on November 5th. Um, if you'd like to support that, uh, let's put it in here. Extra life... There's a donation page there, uh, putting into the chat where you could um, make a donation. If we raise, I, th I think we just hit two hundred dollars today, which is awesome. Um, if we can raise six hundred dollars before our game day, I'll let the players in that game have an extra level as they start up. And uh, so, uh, your your donations not only go to a great cause for raising money for the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin, but they can um, impact our game and influence the fun that we'll be having. I think we'll probably have some giveaways and such as well on the day. I just haven't uh, figured that out yet. But we usually do quite a few uh, different giveaways whenever we do our charity games. So mark your calendars and come check that out um, just about a month from now. All right, so um, that's going to bring us, that's that's all I've got for announcements and such, so we'll jump right into the fun here tonight and what we're doing with this session. So, um, there, there. I guess I'll just say this. We did have a session that technically kind of kicked this off. It was very much kind of a investigation, kind of fact-finding mission, and both um, Gabe's character and Jeff's character were a part of that. But I had some, like, internet connection issues, and so I've got this, like, video that's, like, 12 parts, and I'd have to download each part and edit it together, and I, I'm probably not going to do that. So we're going to use this—we're this, this we're, going to get a little summary, I think, from the characters in-game about 
what they learned and and what exactly transpired in the previous session but for, for all intents and purposes if you're watching this on youtube or whatever this is there isn't like you're, you're not going crazy like there isn't like a session that you missed or something like this this is part one of the princess of the apocalypse uh series that we are doing so um but uh just a little bit of a recap from where i sit um our characters here oh and right away casey just redeemed by a player a re-roll so uh one re-roll in the pot for you all and where we begin uh our session here is going to start on the fourth day of patch ball so it is officially autumn um Whoa, where cheers, we're man. at and hey thank you for the cheer appreciate that hey todd thank you so much for the cheer that's awesome looks like hype train is closing in so thanks everybody for coming and hanging out here tonight um yeah we're at fourth day of uh the ma month of patch ball so we're officially in autumn and our characters, uh, we have a number of characters that came to the village of Rastor, which is about three days journey from Hamlet. Uh, they came to Rastor with Burn, his most worshipful mage of Hamlet, to come to the village Rastor to basically do some digging into um, occult activities oh, the because there had been some uh, speculation about uh, Larith may be having some connection to this renewed cult of elemental evil, and the village of Rastor had been brought up in uh, a journal that um, seemed to have belonged to a member of the cult. Uh, there, there's sort of a secondary reason why uh, they all came to Rastor as well, and that is that the gnomes from the uh, Free Assembly of the Cron Hills had sent a... Uh, diplomatic mission basically this way to treat with the elves of Selene at Feathergale Spire just to the south of Rastor uh, just to talk about some kind of routine matters uh, regarding their joint patrols throughout the Cron Hills and things like that but uh, the delegation came through Rastor uh, presumably went on to Feathergale Spire but never returned home and so the gnomes had uh, Entreated with the Council of Hamlet to maybe take a look into these matters. And Burn sort of thinks you don't really hear much about Rastor. And so for Rastor to come up twice, both in in connection with the elemental cults and this matter, that they're probably all connected in some way. So they all came to Rastor and uh, began to sleuth around. And boy, did they get a lot of information about some weird things that are, are going on. So... Um, I think that'll all get sort of discussed here in play, so I won't go too much into that. I think we'll just jump right into uh, some character introductions as we start things off. So um, I'm going to go maybe reverse order on my overlay so we can have Donovan go last since Donovan is just coming coming into the story of, after um, having seen him in 10 years. So why don't we start here first, uh, Gabe, with your character just to give us kind of the the rundown of um you know maybe tell us what what thorwald has been doing these past 10 years and um yeah just what what do we need to know about them as we start up hey hi guys i'm gabe and i'm playing thorwald arno he's a, a barbarian paladin he um participated in in the, the season one let's just speak says so to speak and after that he got some unfinished business with his family back in the northeast, like where the um, Frost and uh, Ice Barbarians uh, live um, on the Cor Coruscant? No, not Coruscant. Anyway, I'll, I'll Corusk, Corusk Mountains, if you have the, the map of the Flana is handy. Um, it's not clear what happened. He, I think he, he was hoping to get his rightful place in the tribe. His father had been a chieftain, uh, mother had been a shaman, uh, but things didn't turn out the way he expected. And so after a couple of years, he came back towards Furiondi, where he returned the crown of Prince Thrommel that some people had retrieved during the exploration of the Temple of Elemental Evil. 
Um, after that, he probably netted some money as, as a reward for, for bringing that back. Uh, what is certain is that he returned around Omelette and he used that money to start building like a small, um, you know, timber palisade type of fort um, to the west of Omelette. Um, like, in a way, he, he felt that there was some unfinished business um, in Hamlet. And, and the two things that, you know, were top of, of concern in his minds were that weird uh, wizard that they had found in the uh, fire node, uh, Sargon. And he had made all these weird mentions about his Dark Lord that does, has no name and so on and so forth. And then he revealed in a thing that was very shocking for Thorwald to hear that his master knew about Absalom. And and by looking at that dagger with the symbol of the eye, um, Lareth claiming initially to be um, coming as uh, being a follower of the uh, old, old elemental eye or something like that. So all that stuff there was really feeling uh, weird to him. So as soon as he could, he came back. And in fact, I think he came back at the right moment because uh, he was briefed by Rarith and Yang and the, all the other characters in the other session about all the things that transpired recently by groups going to the Moth House, to the Temple of Elemental Evil in Nub. Um, a lot of things going on. And, and the thing that really, really caught his attention were, were mentioned to Lareth. Um, Thor what knows, I mean, not personally or intimately, but, you know, he knows he's a big baddie. And, and the fact that he's back and has been handed, you know, an ancient relic from the past, has been made champion of Earth, and this reborn uh, cult of the Elder Elemental Eye is all things that, very, very bad news, they have him a lot concerned. So he joined the, the mission, um, came to Rasta with a bunch of other folks, and, um, you know that that's where we'll kick off as 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 Donovan, you know, make himself known. I think we'll spend some time bringing up to speed. But that these are the two cents um, about Thorwald. Awesome, thank you for that, Gabe. Uh, let's turn over now to uh, Jeff. Tell us a little bit about uh, Rareth. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff. I'm playing Rareth. Um, uh, Rareth is a half orc ranger. Um, he had been wandering the wilderness, uh, pretty much uh, solitary life. Um, he made his way to Hamlet, got to uh, adventuring with some parties and decided that it was time for him to settle down. Um, along his adventures, he found out that not only is he half orc, he's also half elf. And he has um, made a home in Hamlet the uh, house and the whole nine yards. Awesome. And then we will turn it over to Chris to tell us a little bit about uh, Donovan we haven't seen in a while. I'm um, Chris. I am playing Votary Donovan Lockwood. So that's how he was known the last time I played him. Um, I won't get into too much. I guess maybe just more brief overview of what he's done over the last 10 years, but he had a, uh, after everything with the temple, he headed north back to the post that was fighting the Luna, where he was charged with coming down and finding out what was going on around Pomlet, uh, took news of what took place there. Uh, he had found a, uh, brooch of, uh, house. I don't know if I ever got a name on the house of uh, that the brooch had been taken from. Uh, he returned that, and uh, too much pomp and circumstance. Uh, they knighted him, made him a lord. Uh, he was put into uh, service and uh, gained the title of Lord Commander of Falls Keep which is a keep on the far western side of Valuna uh, that kind of protects from the west uh, any incursions from the Ketites. Uh, so he was placed in charge there where he served uh, Duke Darneth uh, Garnish. Uh, 
and that is pretty much other than, you know the first few few years there were, you know he repelled some stuff the last five years have been uh fairly non-eventful um he had gotten word he had received a missive that uh canonist yade had passed away and he he made a uh made haste this direction to uh, pay his respects to you day uh, for everything that had uh, transpired in the previous campaign. And he, at this particular point, happens to be passing through uh, staying in Rastor. So whether St. Cuthbert is smiling to get these people back together or... It's just pure happenstance. Uh, we'll find out. So Awesome. So that is where we will pick up. Um, it is the day after uh, Rareth and Thorwald, you, the two of you have uh, arrived in Rastor. So you've stayed at least one night here at the Swinging Sword, which is the nicer of the two taverns that you could find yourselves at uh in the uh you you had spent a, a little bit of time doing some sleuthing at that place across the street at the helm of the high sun which is a little bit more of a um there's a, let's just say there's a little heavier drinking that happens there and maybe some other substance abuse apparently um it's definitely the 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 place where um banditry or, or, or bandits or uh, folk that um, maybe are looking to, spoiling for a fight might might go um, but burn um, had steered you towards the end of the swinging sword to be the place where you primarily would take up uh, residence as you were doing your investigations in in through Rastor um, and so we're gonna say it is a uh, uh, morning time. As we're picking up, maybe uh, about 8 a.m. or so, as um, oh, jams, you're coming down uh, from the common room that, or the private rooms where you're staying and uh, looking to get some breakfast. Um, uh, as you're doing so, um, Burn is definitely present, as are um, Taki and Wanalan, who uh, you had hired on. Um, their services to maybe uh, uh, provide some assistance or help you out a bit. And uh, I see Isaac, thank you so much for the cheer. And it looks like everyone just got a reroll. So um, we will count that. We're, we're, we're down uh, short here on players. So we'll say that the buy everyone a reroll is really buying you five rerolls. So you guys are up to six rerolls here. Um, so you're coming down uh, into the common room here uh, to, to get some food and maybe converse a bit um, with your comrades about what, what lies in store. Um, we will say for the purposes of the session that uh, your other comrades that you rolled into town with, they're already out maybe in the field kind of doing some investigations and such. And so their primary plan is to continue to stick around in Rastor, uh, at least for the context of the time that we're spending here in the session so uh rare earth and thor well do you 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 find yourself you find yourselves a table and that is when the door opens and donovan walks in and even though it's been 10 years uh instantly recognize him as your former comrade from your days uh, fighting against Ayaz and Zagatmoy's forces. Yeah, he would, he would look pretty much the same, except his mustache is more grandiose, and he has a little more, he's a little more salt and peppery. In his hair. Don't worry, you see a, a dude with a, a leather mask that might be Thorwald that just laughs as he sees you and just comes over and gives you a huge bear hug. Uh, would I completely recognize him? Uh, you might be a little bit <laughs> perplexed. Uh, 
you are you do have Saint Cuthbert stuff on though, right? I do have the shield with the with the coat of arms of Catherine. Yes. All right. Uh, as as it sets in who you are as you come up, he will uh, give you a hearty pat on the back and kind of pull you away and hold your shoulders and say, Thorwald, our uh, hey, our paths meet again, brother. What uh, what has you here? Um, a lot of stuff, brother, but, but sit with us. Uh, let, let me tell you everything uh, as we drink some beer. Oh, and, and there's, there's someone you need you to, to meet here, Rarith. Uh, he, he's joined us uh, recently. He's a very good fella. I will order a brandy. That's my drink of choice, not beer, but uh, I will go over and sit down at the table as I meet Rarith. I'll stick my hand out and say, well met, friend. Well met. Thorwald, who do we have here? Oh, this is uh, Votary Donovan Lockwood. Um, he is a brother in the faith of St. Cuthbert. Um, I haven't seen him in 10 years, but uh, he seems to be doing well for himself, judging by the look. It's been quite a 10 years. Uh, let's... Let's sit, have breakfast, and uh, I will catch you up on the new things with me. And, Arcade, uh, can I get a coffee, please? <laughs> and uh, everything that you are ordering uh, comes uh, in in short order. Um, Kalesa, the proprietor of the Swinging Sword, um, tends to you personally. So Thorwald, did, have you spent most of this time around this area? I headed north and uh, took part in the in the uh, repelling of Ayuz's forces. What did you do? Uh, it's a long story, brother, but uh, suffice it to say that uh, I went looking for my roots and found that they run too deep for me to dig down. Um, but now I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm setting down roots in Hamlet, uh, if, I, if I can. And uh, it couldn't be a moment sooner. There are dark tidings um, like 10 years ago. And uh, again, I don't know if this is chance or this is our Lord putting you here, but I cannot. I have to be appreciative that, that you happen to be here today because... We've uncovered some troubling notions uh, and news, um, but but let's start from the beginning. Y you know, there there is a lot to catch you up on, and and I think Rareth. I, I don't want to steal the thunder from you because Rareth here has been participating to a lot of the investigations around Hamlet. Um, so actually, I think you should you should do the honors. Yes, please. Fill me in. There have definitely been some issues in Hamlet and in the surrounding areas. The Welkwood. Um, we found some cultists in the Welkwood. Um, an obelisk with a dungeon underneath it. Um, it looked like the the cultist up top had uh, committed suicide or had been ritually killed or something. Um, we fought a Barghest in the dungeon. Where did you say this obelisk was? Uh, this was in the Welkwood. <clears throat> there have been several adventures that have uh, went into the Cron Hills. And there are some, uh, for the lack of a better term, I will call them people, called the Droon. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the Droon, but... Uh, I'm not familiar with the Droon, but uh, my man that I have in Hamlet, 
uh, had informed me that he had he had uh, come across not the drone themselves, but uh, I guess had have uncovered some ancient um, artifacts. And things. Um, his name is Stevrum. Do you know him? Yes, I have adventured with Stevrum. So I've kept Good my man. eyes. I mean, yeah, he. Uh, um, I raised him for about the last ten years. So he was a refugee from up north, and uh, he received training at the keep. And uh, you know, being as I never took a wife and had any children, I more or less fostered him and. He was my latest eyes and ears in Hamlet. I've, I've had them there for, well, the extent probably the last eight years or so. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, he's a very good man, rather handy with his, with his great sword. Yes, he is. We have also adventured into the Lort Mills. Um, there were cultists that we found while um, hunting manticores. We, we came across some cultists there. And then the big places, um, we did go back to the moat house. I know that you, you guys went to the moat house whenever this was going on 10 years ago. We uh, made our way down into the, the bowels of the moat house and Thorwald, should I show him the dagger? Uh, if you, if it does, if it doesn't bother you, yes. I mean, I think Donovan, you've seen the one Absalom was carrying around. Yes, definitely. I'll pull it out and put it on the table. Is this its twin? I think so. I, I, I would assume that. I don't know a whole lot about this Absalom. I would like to hear stories of Absalom. But I would assume from what I have heard that he wouldn't have parted with his. So this has to be one just like the one he had. Yeah, it was a, kind of a secret he kept close to his chest as far as I remember. Or as far as I had heard. But uh, I had heard stories that there was something odd with it cursed or otherwise uh the cultists have you were they eliminated or did you find out who or what they were worshiping a lot of the cultists that we found were dead already um we did find live cultists in the bottom of the boathouse and they were dispatched um they were consorting with um why can't i remember what these creatures are called gnolls gnolls thank you they were consorting with gnolls um the odd thing was several of us were apparently taken over by this chained god um also possibly called the elemental eye the chained he, god alex does that ring any bells with me um did you have many interactions with sargon Sargon, I don't think so. He was the he was he the guy who had the flaming balls. He no, he was um he was initially found in the fire node, I believe. Uh, okay. He was yeah, no. seemed no. like he worshipped some kind of god or entity that um, took great offense to. The fact that Zugget Moy had manipulated the cults into coming to her beck and call. 
Okay. And at this point, if you don't mind, I'm going to put this dagger away because I understand that it may be able to see us. And so I do, I stow that away. I may, I may like to take a look at that at some later point, perhaps um, in Absolutely. Hoplet or some place with a little more protections. And uh, as you're a follower of St. Cuthbert, I have um, shown this to Ken and Calmert, and he has given me some advice on it that we'll talk about that at a later time. We also went to the Temple of Elemental Evil um, on, the, on the request of Byrne to find um, his... his uh, troll friend, uh, I should say his troll employee, which we did Ulgrist, do. Ulgrist, I believe his name is. Yes. Ulgrist, Ulgrist, yes. yes. And what was found there? Was it Ulgrist making his way, but other than that, for the most part, unoccupied? Or? There were some shadows that had sapped Ulgris strength and we were able to help him out of that situation but otherwise it was mostly uneventful well, at least it is not active again <clears throat> I think uh, Burn is probably like looking at you, Rareth, like he's drinking some brandy over there in the corner too, and he's just like very much like eavesdropping, listening to what you're saying. <laughs> and if he, I see he, Burn, he, I will wave. He'll he'll come over. Uh, so he's yeah, I'll wave him over. Yeah, uh, Donovan, pleasure to see you again. You... I, I'll stand and give him a little little bow that's due the most honored mage of Hamlet or whatever his title was. I can't remember. As you're, most honorable mage. As you're, you're bowing, you can see he's like kind of scanning the room and he's like, uh, have you brought any others with you? No. It's just me. I uh, came to pay my respects to Canonus Yade, I had caught wind of her passing. Oh. Was on my way there, and just so happens, I hmm. saw my old compatriot uh, Thorwald there. Well, they're even stranger still then to find you here. I had hoped uh, maybe you had gotten one of my messages I'd sent out. But it seems, however it should happen, the gods of fate have, have brought you here to our table now, and uh, I'm sure you, you are well appraised of the situation that Thorwald and Rareth here have given you enough details that you can see that well it, it it is it is just as before as I'm sure they have told you, and we've got almost too much information we've done quite well for ourselves uh, learning about the problems that have befallen Rastor here. It's just like Alma ten years ago. But too many leads, too many leads. Just need more men on it. Well, I am, I am hopeful that I, I sent messages across the lands hoping to find some of our former comrades that they might rally around this cause once again, but finding everyone has been challenging to say the least but we've got the three of you now and we've got uh what was his name Taki Toki Taki Taki and 101 those two we can have them uh, be a part of the team here and we've got the the good father brother Irdan yes he seems to believe that there's some kind of reformed church of St. Cuthbert 
operating out of these hills. Anything that you've heard? Any information about Donovan? No, I haven't heard of any new church in the area. However, um, any new construction or anything like that um, would have to be requested by the church. And if Brother Erdon had not been informed, uh, I find that very peculiar. It, it does not follow standard protocol. Even more reason that this should probably be checked out. Um, seems likely it could be a front for one of these new branches of the cult. Well, I would be more than happy to uh, go along and speak with these uh, with these new Cuthbertines. And I think um, Brother Iridon is, is here as well, and so he will uh, make his presence known. Um, rather younger-looking uh, priest. Um, he, he had described himself as a bit of a missionary, and so he's kind of in that early phase of his... Um, work as a member of the clergy of the Church of St. Cuthbert, and he had come out to this area kind of to um, visit with a lot of the, lo the very small townships and whatnot, and he had overheard or bumped into people claiming that they were looking for this uh, monastery of uh, the Reformed St. Cuthbert. Um, so he's got a general idea of where it is, uh, somewhere to the southeast. Um about a three days journey. Three days to the southeast, you said? Yeah, that's that that is what his belief is. You have to kind of search. He doesn't have like a precise location exactly, but he knows it's somewhere on the slopes of the Lord Mills. From uh, the, the little that he knows about it, it sounds like it is built or exists um, maybe upon the foundation of an old dwarven keep. Also, the All-Faith Temple here in town was um, vandalized, defiled, desecrated. The one here in Raster? Yes. Symbols of the cults painted in the in the temple. Yeah, then if I, but I, I I don't know much more than than where it knows, but I can tell you those symbols seems eerily similar to air, water, fire, and uh, and earth cults that, that we've encountered a decade past. Now, the, the symbols are not the same, they're different. And now they seem there's this symbol of the eye. But, you know, you can change uh, a little bit uh, cosmetically, but it does not change the substance that these cults of elemental evil are back on the new leadership. And that's not even the worst of it. It seems that Lareth is back as well and is being made a champion of Earth. Really? Yeah. The cultists in the bottom of the moat house were searching for these ancient weapons and there was a plinth in the, in the very bottom where this chained god talked to us um, that depicted it, it was four sides and it depicted four different characters that didn't have weapons in their hands but it looked like weapons belonged in their hands and it's our belief that Lareth is in possession of one of these weapons was it a zord Lareth? I believe. Uh, I would say the um, 
the item belonging to Elemental Earth was a uh, war pick. Oh, okay. Like, you, you didn't know that at the time, but now, knowing what you know now can work backwards and identify that. Uh, the weapon belonging to Elemental Air would be would be a spear. That of fire is a dagger. Earth is a war pick, and water is a trident. And also in the the basement of the moat house was a tablet that had these. Uh, same symbols <clears throat> that Thorwald and I saw drawn in the All Faith Temple here. Hmm. <clears throat> I'd be interested uh, once we return to look at these symbols and such. I uh, there was a book that I had found ten years ago that had read through. And it talked about, and help me out, Alex, uh, elemental princes? Arco elementals. Arco elementals, thank you. Um, is it possible, I mean, is it possible that they're trying to bring one of these back up again? Uh, Burn, Burn would step in and be like, that is my belief. I believe that these four weapons that were somehow underneath the old moat house date back to the Sewell Empire. The fabled weapons that were responsible for the twin cataclysms. Really? And so, there, there's much belief that that situation those those the those events that created that decimated that empire in the in those times were created by arco elementals and larith is back and he's found Oh, and one other thing that I forgot to mention: there is a dragon in the in the moat house. Stevram did include that in one of his pieces, but fighting dragons is not my speciality. Anyway, well, there, there this are is dark dire fightings. news. It yes, is. This is dark news. It seems uh, perhaps I was brought back here for a different reason rather than honoring a fallen friend. And if I could just say any friend of your day is a friend of mine. Give you a slight bow. I'd say likewise. She was my mentor. She was a great woman. No doubt about that. Well, let us finish our meal and uh, go have a talk with these people. All right, so you um, finish your meal, uh, maybe pack some provisions for the road. Uh, likely, uh, probably bringing the horses and whatnot would be sort of impractical, um, given the terrain that you're about to uh, embark in. It's very rocky and very mountainous, and so um, you could bring them along, but it, it probably isn't going to really save you any time. You'd be spending just as much time probably dismounted trying to guide the horses through uh the terrain 
So um, is there anything else that you guys want to do in Rastor before you head out? Might be good to tell your other companions that you're bolting out. That's just flavor, but... And Burn, Burn can certainly be sort of the... Um... Uh, the organizer here that's kind of keeping notes on where everyone is at and can can provide those those updates. Um, and you're taking Taki and Wanalan and uh, Brother Irdan with you. And um, yeah, so you're going to head out onto the road, uh, heading down uh, probably um, east, taking the Cairn Road as, lo as far as it'll take you before you have to start kind of veering off and, uh, um, you know, there really is no road leading to where you are going. Uh, we're not going to really do the play-by-play -play of the next three days, but um, it'll bring us up to the seventh day of Patchwall, which will fix our problem of we weren't, you know, starting off on the, the, the actual day. Now we're on the 7th of October. So uh, you, uh, on the third day, you do have to do some searching a bit in in the hills um it is a pretty crisp cool fall day um probably about 50 degree weather cloudy overcast um why don't you all give me perception checks and we'll have this kind of represent how quick it is for you to uh get eyes on your destination But I see a 24 there from Donovan and Rareth doing uh, just as well with the 21. The two of you at some point spot as you're scanning kind of the um, the bottom slopes of the Lortmel Hills, Lortmel Mountains. Um, there is sort of a kind of craggy looking structure that sits apart atop a um, one of the lower slopes. And uh, it sort of looks like some kind of a structure and you can... As you, as you narrow your eyes on it, you can see that it isn't just a part of the mountain, but is, is actually some kind of dwarven make structure, it looks like. Sort of a uh, a low keep with a number of uh, s uh, slits in the walls, likely uh, view, uh, viewing portals out, uh, sized in the sort of way that makes you think that they are designed for uh, archers uh, to be able to shoot arrows out. But there's a little switchback road that rises up to the front doors of this structure. There's not a soul in sight. Um, just a couple of birds and crows that kind of dot the uh, little dirt path that leads up to it. Um... There's some smoke that rises up from somewhere on the top of the structure. Maybe some kind of chimney is there. And so uh, you've got that little little sense that it is inhabited, but that's about the only clue as to the fact that there's anybody that dwells there. Manners would dictate we approach openly. Agreed. Rareth, you comfortable with that? Yes. Donovan, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'll let you make the talk, or brother Eardon. Um, I'm not really good with methods of faith. But I trust that you can uh, sense if there's something afoul here, as I suspect there is. Keep your... Uh... Keep your sword loose in its sheath. Just in I case. will do. But give the signal, okay? Because I'm known to be impetuous. So I'll be waiting for a sign from you. I don't, I don't trust my judgment here. Very well. So you're all walking together up the trail? Okay. So yep. uh, you start to make your way up... Uh, the narrow trail that uh, eventually leads you to this wind sculpted um, 
uh, hill, part low part, low hanging part of the mountain, uh, where this structure uh, opens up before you. It is dark, even though you got kind of sight on some of these small windows and everything. Uh, you don't see any light or anything, um, candlelight or torchlight or anything like that. Um, it was a very gloomy kind of structure. And uh, as the trail ends and leads you up to this weathered set of stairs, it leads up to two... Plain double doors, which are closed. They're built of a hard wood and uh, bound to the uh, portal with just iron studs. And you can hear, um, you can hear that there are footsteps walking on what sounds like stone floor on the other side. Before we do anything, can I switch places with Brother Iridan, please? Are you guys able to move these tokens? Okay, cool. For some reason, I'm moving, like, both of my guys. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, try switching to, like, a different tool, like the measurement tool or something, and then, like, clicking off somewhere, and then going back to the... Okay. Yep, that works. Token control, right. sometimes that helps. Yep. Thank you. Um, I would... Um, another thing that I would say about the doors is, uh, the one on the right has, like, a little... Looks like a little viewing portal, like like a little slidey door kind of thing. I will uh, give a couple of hard pounds and take a step back. The viewing portal opens, and uh, it doesn't. There's only a few inches tall, but you can see that there's some kind of like masked, golden masked figure uh, looking back out at you and uh, as it's leering it just says yes what do you want I adjust my holy symbol make sure that it's uh, presented I give a slight bow and I say votary Donovan Lockwood I hear that uh this place is consecrated to St. Cuthbert. We uh, seek entry. We were not aware that you would be arriving today. I understand. Uh, and I kind of look to my left and I say, this is Brother Eardon, priest of the temple of uh, Raster. Uh, none of us were told that you would be here, so we came out to see and make sure that everything was well. You know, it's customary that uh, when one of the fellow faith uh, comes in that they are allowed entry. Yes? You are of the old faith. We do not stick to such traditions. We are of the Reformed Church. We are free of the hand of Voluna, of the Arch Cleric. Well, I do not come here representing Voluna. I come here representing our Lord. May we enter? Seek refuge? We have no business with you here today. A lot of bandits on the road. We do not know you. We do not trust you. We bid you farewell. He just shuts the little portal and you can kind of hear some scuffling of 
footsteps on the other side of the door. Well, well that, that did not go. go well. No. <laughs> to put it mildly, should we make a forced entry? Taki's like, I mean, all we're doing here waiting is giving time, time, them time to organize. I think a fight here is inevitable, unfortunately. Yeah, and there is nothing that I have heard or Brother Erdin has heard or anything of any new offshoot of St. Cuthbert, correct? Correct. All right. Dorwald, I'll back your play. What say you, Brother Iridan? Uh Brother Iridan just says, well, um, we could do that, I suppose. Um, this certainly does not feel right. Um, I don't suppose there's any chance that they're legitimate. I do Legit not. I do not believe that if they are the new faith, that that has been sanctioned. And it. And if they are utilizing the name of Saint Cuth, uh, it needs to be sanctioned. We'll do as you say, brother. You're done if you don't think that we should act with uh, force here. We shall not. But my instinct tells me that this is a foul. Uh, brother Iridan doesn't have an objection to it. Uh, he He's going to let it be your call. You can tell he's he's got some trepidation about the idea. Like he's nervous that that it could be a mistake, but... Um, ultimately, he's curious about what, what is happening here, and he is more inclined to believe that there is something afoul here than that these are just very, uh, very discerning Cuthbertines out here in the mountains. Are there any questions that you could ask that regardless of new faith, old faith, whatever, that they should know the answer to that would tell us? Rare, Rareth, my, I will say this. My check was the ability to seek audience and gain entrance. It's something that is afforded to all brothers and sisters of St. Cuthbert, and for them to refuse, they, they are breaking all protocol and rules ascribed by the church. So you are 100% sure that they're not legit? That would be my assessment. Yes. Then let's get in there after them. May I? Please, brother. All right, so you're hoping to bash the door in? Yeah, but before I do that, I will rage to give myself a oh, pick-me-up. All right, sounds good. And then give me a strength uh, check. Okay, coming. I will roll with advantage. And strength, ability check, advantage. All right. Um, no, we have a reroll. Don't even really need it. These are wooden doors, and they aren't altogether that sturdy. Um, and so, as you move forward here to to bash this in, it comes down pretty handedly. And as you do so, you can see that there are five uh, unarmored. 
figures that are just wearing um kind of uh geese i guess and they've got golden masks that are crafted in the shape of a gargoyle's face and they all are in sort of fighting positions fighting stances as if they're preparing for hand-to-hand -hand combat with you so we're gonna roll initiative Second here, let me double check something. That there was something. So you already rolled initiative for the NPCs, correct? Yeah, it looks like the only ones I don't have on there are Donovan and Rareth. And uh, Donovan, did you have an initiative? Oh, there it is. Yeah, sorry. I, would, I was looking at something. There's something where I can give it uh advantage or a bonus on uh initiative rolls or something like that oh okay I think. but i i can't find it so that might that actually might be a, so, okay so um well, well but i will i will look into it more this time and... okay um so we're gonna start things off the the monks at least a few of them have the jump here and one of them is going to move over 5, 10, 15, 20. And is going to try to um, push you prone, Thorwald. So it'll be a strength, opposed strength check. And is unable to do so as you are bashing down the door. Um, and he'll just step over here. Next one up is... Over here. So he's going to move over. He's going to uh, come in with... Uh, he's going to launch himself at you with a kick. Missing, and then he'll go in for a palm strike. Uh, 20 will hit. 20 hits. Yeah. And four is the damage that he rolled. You're raging, so you take half. Uh, third one comes up right here, and same thing. He's going to make two unarmed strikes against you. One is a hit. Four points, and then the second strike will miss. That'll bring us to Irdan's turn. Okay, I'm controlling Brother Irdan for the purposes of this fight, and he will. Let me see. Let's get some nice spells. Um. But I believe he is still, it might still be kind of half-heartedly into this fight. So I think for the time being, he will cast Sanctuary on himself. Sounds good. That'll bring us to Taki. Okay, and I am controlling Taki. Taki is going to move up here. Actually, I went to the wrong side. Is that... Am I in front of the door or not? Uh, so there's two doors. You're in front of a door that is still closed. And the one over he right here is the one that Thorold busted down. But 
um, if you're trying to get into melee, you, you are within reach of that one in the middle here. That guy can hit that guy? Yep. Then I shall do so. And he is going to swing his great sword two handed. It's oh, time to I use one of those rerolls. <laughs> I believe he will want to reroll that one. Eighteen to hit. Eighteen. Let me just ch double check. I'm fairly certain there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, that'll hit. And he is going to re-roll that one using fighting style great weapon fighting. Huh, that's still a one. So it'll be nine points of damage. He'll take a second swing. Hey. <laughs> and that's a crit. Nice. I'm going to re-roll the two and the one. So that gives... 17. 17 total? Mm -hmm. All right. He goes down. The great sword cleaves through him. Did you see that one, Alon? He's done. All right. That brings us to Thorwald. Thor oh, would roar to uh, attack you. Good job, man. And moves inside. This is do there. Uh, it will swing as a bonus action. It will act. It will uh, activate his uh, flaming longsword, and then we'll try to take in a swing at this guy. Um. How many rerolls we have? You have five. What do you guys say? Yes. yes. Okay, then I'll reroll that five. You got it. Okay, and so the damage will be this one plus two, so uh, 13. Plus this, plus seven, so uh, twenty. And this is the one to the left or to the right? This is the one to the right. All right, he does not look good. So I'll swing at him again with a second attack. And with that second swing, you're gonna drop him. And Thor is going to say, surrender now, or we're going to kill you all. You can't really read much human emotion just due to the fact that they have those masks on, but their uh, fighting position sort of suggests that they um, they don't react to that. They, they seem like they're going to fight to the death. Donovan. Okay, first, one, two. Uh, now you can move through friendly as difficult terrain, right? Yep. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move to here, uh, stepping around Thorwald. Um... I'm going to take the uh, attack action. So I'm going to use a bonus action and attempt to knock this guy here 
prone. Yeah, that's just a strength check, right? Uh, ath yeah, it's athletics. Yeah. All right, you got him. He drops. Prone. Okay. And I will attack him when he's prone. I guess that's advantage, right? Did that roll? Uh, you got a twenty-six, so that'll hit. But you could you could roll again, see if it's a crit. Okay, the twenty-six hits. Okay. Uh. Let's see, was that 11 points? That was 11 points. I, let me make sure that plus 7. I think that plus 7, yeah, that would include my dueling. Okay, and uh, second attack. How do you roll it with advantage rather than roll it twice? There's some way on D&D &D Beyond. Uh, I think so. I guess shift should be shift. If I remember correctly, keep the shift pressed and then click. Gotcha. Okay. Think that. See if that worked. Ooh, sixteen. Um, let me just double check something. Okay. Uh, yes, that'll hit. And you uh, skewer him as he's trying to uh, roll out of the way. Uh, you manage to land a point of your sword right through his chest. Okay. Uh, I will step up and say, as my friend said, Yield, and you will live. Rareth. That is it. Oh, Rareth is going to... Bonus action, Hunter's Mark. That guy? Does that show up? Can you see where I've got it targeted? That one right there? Okay, sounds good. Okay. And I will fire an arrow at him. Yeah. And I will re-roll that. Eighteen to hit. That hits. So he's got five points of damage from the hunter's mark, and then he will take Ooh, both of those were twos. Um, I'm going to re-roll both of those. A D8. Why did it roll two dice? Is that in favor of full damage? I don't know. Uh, let me roll that again and see how how that rolls because something didn't look right about that. Oh, it was okay. It was the D8 that I was wanting to reroll. I understand what it was doing now. Okay. So I, the the two the favored foe damage 
I didn't cast favored foe, so we'll take that off. It's just 11 points to of clean damage. 11. Okay. Sounds good. That one, um, well, let me just see. So it was 11 plus what was the earlier damage from the hunter's mark? Five, uh, five from the hunter's mark, so 16 and then, and then there will be another d8 for dread ambusher for my first attack. And that's another eight points of damage. All right, that will drop this one. Um, so I can't move the Hunter's Mark on the same turn that I cast it, can I? Correct. Yeah, you'll have to, just have to wait a sec. Okay, well, I will just go ahead and shoot at the other guy back there. Twenty one to hit. That hits. And that will be for seven points of damage. Seven points. All right. Awesome. This guy's got an arrow sticking out of the chest that just pierced through his cloth. Uh Gi that he's wearing that will bring us to Wanalon. Okay, Wanalon. One, two, three, four. So he moves there. Uh, he's at, what is going on? He's moving over here. Uh, it's, I guess he can bonus action dash, right? Thief stuff. Yes. And, uh, and then fire his bow. That'll hit. And that be it. All right. This monk is up. And he's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20. Right here, he's going to take two swings on Wanalan. Fifteen to hit. That's that's a hit. Six points of damage. Second swing. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Or eight points of damage. Ooh. Okay, fourteen. And then it's Irdan's turn. Okay, so he had cast uh, Sanctuary. He will move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He cannot get to Wailon yet. So he'll basically dash and move himself in this corner. Ready to cure next round. Done. Taki's turn. Uh, Taki will move in. Uh, and he will take a swing with his great sword.
He'll miss with the first attack. He'll take the second attack. Thirteen hit or miss? That one will miss. And okay. Thorwald. Talk, done. Thorwald will five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Move to here and swing at this guy. Sixteen. That'll hit. Takes ten points of damage. He goes down. So we're out of combat right here. Um, where you are currently standing in this hall with these dropped monks on the ground is an austere hall that is uh, finished in irregular blocks of dark basalts that. Uh, form natural columns along the walls. The interior doors lead east and west. And uh, just to your north, you can see there are kind of narrow uh, window frames here that seem like they look into an inner courtyard. Uh, Wanalyn will move up to peek out while Donovan leans down and flips one of the masks off and sees I mean just kind of investigating the person see if there's any St. Cuthbert markings or anything like that the uh there is not but on the head of the person that you, when you remove the gargoyle and mask they have uh kind of scarred into their forehead this triangular shaped sigil that looks uh, very much reminiscent of the symbol of the, the old cult of Earth that you recall. And as Wanalon looks up through that window to the north, he can see uh, the outline up here of a kind of gargoyle-shaped statue standing on a stone pedestal and a stone door right here. Which which way you guys want to go, left or right? Hey, Thorwald, uh, Rareth, is this the symbol that was put on the on the All Faith Temple? Yeah, one of the ones. All right. Yes. Uh, left is right, right is wrong. Go to the left. There's the symbol. Okay. Only difference is that little line that's up from the center of the base of the pyramid. Yeah, that wasn't there before, right? Yeah, before it was just a triangle, right? Am I recalling correctly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. To the left. So this door over here. Um, is a wooden door. Uh, appears to be locked. Uh... Donovan will tell Wanalyn to check this other one. So he goes over to see if this one's locked as well. But, I don't know. Thorwald, you want to... Did I do that? Uh, I just did that. That one That one okay. is open. Leads to a hallway here where there is um, at least two visible doors and another window. Hmm. Well, people tend to be behind locked doors, Thorwald. I'm going to smash this thing. 
Uh, can Wanalon do anything roguish to it? Oh, I guess that's true. I keep forgetting that he's a rogue. He'll come and try and unlock it. Or check it for traps first. Yeah, well, uh, it's a very, very simple door, and so uh, no, no traps that you can see. Um, go ahead and give me a... Um, why don't you just roll his sleight of hand check? We'll say he has double proficiency with these tools. Yeah, he, well, he he does have that actually, I think on his thing. So, uh, whoops, that messed up. Okay. All right, hold on a second. I took something off of there. Uh. Okay. There we go. Got to relearn this. No problem. Yeah. This is a very <laughs> simple lock, and he's able to pick that probably within the minute. And so it uh, leads to another uh, hallway about 10 feet wide. Uh, three wooden doors visible. And another window to the north likely looks into that same courtyard. Is everybody fine with this way? Sure. We'll follow you. All right, so uh, who, who's leading the way? Donovan will move forward. Uh, I think uh, was the priest gonna cast heal on uh, Wanlin? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was meant to do. So let me do it right now. Oh, uh, two, 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 cure wounds. Cast it as a first level. Healing. Normal. He's cured nine hit points. Okay. He's good. He's still down a little bit, but acceptable. Okay. All right. Yeah. Move uh, forward. Check the uh, check the door handle as. I go by. All right. Uh, just you're just you're just twisting it to see if you get a feel that it like loosens it a bit. Yeah, more or less checking to see if it's locked. If it's not locked, he'll. Just... It it feels like it's open. Uh, so if you pushed it inward, it would open. He would do that. All right. Are you doing so with a bit of care? Like stealthily uh, trying to be quiet, or uh, Donovan isn't really quiet, I guess. So okay. no, at this point, mm -mm. you open up the door here, and what you see on the other side is this looks more or less like some kind of a dormitory, I suppose. Um, there is a number of thin cots. Uh, that line the walls and it's very tight quarters um, it looks like they're trying to pack in probably at least a dozen people in this room and so like all of the beds are just real crowded in on each other there are four people uh, that are currently um, asleep and Oops. I think um, we'll see. I'm going to just do a roll quick just to see if there's a chance that they wake up. I don't think you opening the door inherently will pop them all up, but. Yeah, I wasn't like kicking the door open. Just yeah. Open it. We're going to say that uh, you can see one of them. It seems like, like the door kind of creaks a little bit and one of them like 
stirs a little bit, but doesn't fully isn't fully awake or anything. It's just kind of shifted shifted up from a deeper level of sleep to maybe a lighter uh, slumber. But nobody's popping up to greet you or attack you. Well, Donovan is not really into slaying people in their sleep. Uh, <laughs> so, I guess maybe have, I don't know, suggestions from anyone? Just close the door. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lightly close the door. Yeah, I think that's... That sounds good. See? carefully just close that <laughs> no uh i will have wanalon come up and do the same thing here but he will be more quiet <laughs> um this this one is uh this one is locked but we'll say you i'm not gonna make you roll that necessarily this is gonna be easy enough for wanalon to do um, open that one up. This is another dormitory. This one with maybe some nicer beds. Actual structured beds and a little less crowded, but there is nobody in here at the moment. There is, uh, you can see off to the western wall, there's a small wooden table where, uh... A number of chairs are situated around. Okay. Um, under the circumstances, Wanalon will go in and um, rifle through the desk, see if there's any paperwork or whatever. But he's going to make pretty short work of it while everybody else moves down the hallway. Okay, yeah, let's come back to Wanalon and I'll let you know what he finds while the rest of you okay. scout. Is Brother Eardon coming with us? Or is he staying down there? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, let me put Torwell back because I, can, I, I cannot see him anymore. Uh, what happened? Did they cancel it? Oh, he's here. Interesting. If I don't yeah, have side into it. Yeah, I th think if you have if you have one guy selected and he moves out of the way, the other one goes away. But if you click on the measurement thing, your whole screen will pop up. Okay. That was something I found out there. So, so we've got another door here. Check it to see if it's locked as quietly as possible. It is not locked. Uh, carefully open. All right, you open up this door, and it is another dormitory. Uh, this one is... There's a large iron stove that you see uh, on the northern side of the wall there in ten uncomfortable-looking pallets that line the floor uh, amid tidy piles of iron arms and armor. What is it? Uh, ten beds there? this point they've got the they've got the capacity for a couple dozen people yeah these are just the first three rooms that we meet so yeah. the guys more army here well, hopefully they're having trouble recruiting uh what time of day is it alex um... did you say before we will say uh, you spotted it pretty early, so we're gonna say it's maybe like ten a.m. Okay. All right. Thor will say, you know, I'm not into killing innocent people, 
Uh, but at the bare minimum, we should round them up. Uh, I'm not comfortable, honestly, but it would be a mistake to give them a chance to have a jump on us. I agree with that. Um, Non-lethal? Knock them out? I think we can do that. We can enter and, you know, kind of knock them out and then somehow tie them up or something. Like, at the very minimum, like, while we continue the exploration, I wouldn't want to have a force in our back when we go yeah. deeper. You're talking about the guys in this room, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll wait for Wanalon to finish his search and uh, maybe just move in and conk him on the head and tie him up. Sure. So one thing that Wanalan does find during his time in that room is there is underneath one of the beds is an iron coffer. Uh, it's a black iron coffer. Um, and... He could uh, go ahead and do a Thieves' Tools check. Is that a sleight of hand as well there, or a stealth, or...? Yeah, you, you could just use the sleight of hand. It, it would be the same, I think. Okay, he's just having a little bit of a tough time with this coffer, but um, it might be something, like, later on. It, it's, it's something he could hang on to and carry with him. Maybe okay. try at a later time. Sounds good. That down. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say like one of you's got like, you got some rope that you're going to bind these guys up with. Um, easy, easy, easy to do. So I'm not going to call for any ability checks on these, these four monks here. Um, they, um, You, know, you kind of rouse them a bit while that as it happens and you probably have to kind of like knock them out maybe a little bit to get them to cooperate but easy enough to do and so are you gonna keep them tied up bound in this room yes okay i would think so yeah and, clo and close the door so it doesn't look like anything's the matter you know And uh, move towards those double doors. All right. Um, so checking out the doors, uh, they don't appear to be locked. There's something with my vision or something. Yeah, I, I think uh, I see old black here. Yeah. Oh, is the the token vision not quite working for some reason there? Yeah. Okay. Was your only there though? Okay. Um, I'm not sure why that would be. I kind of moved forward and it was almost like erasing the black, right? Okay. Is uh is, your plan is to like open up these doors? And take a look in there. Uh, do we want to do those doors first or do the other side? It might be barracks along that other side as well. Oh, you, you mean like on the right from the main road, the main Cor room? Correct. No, I'll just go from here at this point. Did you, okay. uh, did you want to check out these double doors or the uh, door to the north that you can see? 
Oh, yeah, we, oh. I, we cannot see it. Yeah, we can't see this. Um, we'll do the... Uh, the... And the... You do the single door to the north? Probably. All right, I'm going to... If you want to check that out, I'm going to open that up and see if it fixes anything. Can you sort of... I don't... I, I, I honestly have no idea why there's a dark no, no patch worry. on the map here. Yeah, So don't worry. if you want, you can... We can move yeah. you into the kitchen area here. It opens up some. Yeah. So uh, this definitely opens up into what... Uh, I guess not a kitchen. It's really a kind of a mess hall. Uh, there's a couple of long wooden tables with bench seats that stand in the middle, four in total. Um, and there are shelves around the uh, outer perimeter of the room with um, shelves that have like clay crockery and platters and simple wooden cups and things like that. Very nondescript basic amenities. Uh, to the west, you see two windows that appear... You can see sunlight, so these are exterior windows that look out um, to the canyon beyond the monastery. And there are two doors that lead from this room to the north. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of the edge of my vision to the right. I would... More or less have a, it's like blacked off like here. Okay. Um. Let me see. I. What could yeah, I like do? Like this, like this whole area is pretty much showing up, but it's like the fog of war or whatever kind of thing is is to the right. This is, that doesn't fix anything. Um. I do that. Does that fix anything? That did. Yep. Okay. Okay. That did. Whatever it was, it is gone. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, now we can see the room. And now we can see the room. Do we want to check those door north? Because it seems to be going deeper into the monastery. As well. Yeah. Yeah, well, and likely those double doors uh, are going to lead into a courtyard, a, right? Yeah, there was the one. Uh, what Wanalan had saw was two stone doors and gargoyle statues. So, kind of like the, I would say that that would that would be kind of set up more like an entrance to a temple, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we can try those double doors. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. I mean, they may be, they may, you know, be holding some service currently at the moment. So, but, uh, I'm fine with whatever. If we want to go, uh, I, I would, I would guess that these go into a uh, kitchen, but we can definitely check. I will quickly check. I don't expect this will, will go anywhere else, as you say, like a chicken or paint pantry, but I would rather be certain. Yeah. I'll check this one and you check the yeah, one. Yeah, I'll check the other one. Okay. Uh, the one by you, Donovan, is open and just opens up into this small kind of antechamber here, and there's a little wooden door um at the bend there uh, the one by you thorwald you try it and it is locked locked uh what is your passive perception uh Team? passive perception i would say you you get the sense that there's somebody on the other side of this door you can kind of hear some breathing should be a 13. Mm -hmm. i will gesture to the rest of the party that there might be someone behind this door but it's locked Wanalan's 
Wanalyn will come up and do his lock picking. And Donovan, you know, Donovan informs that there's just short hallway to a doorway. Uh, and Wanalyn will try to quietly pick that lock, if at all possible. Okay. Um, have him give me a stealth check at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, have him do the, the sleight of hand check for the thieves' tools. Ooh. Okay. Um, so. Should I. You want me to re-roll that? Oh, or? yeah. You could do a re-roll. I will do that because that was sad. That was a sad roll. <laughs> Can I ready an action? Oh my gosh. No. Yeah. All right. So, um, I, I'm going to say uh, you, you can't ready an action. Because we're going to have, we're, we're basically going to roll into initiative real quick here. But because of the failure on the uh, thieves' tools, the door swings open, and they're going to, there's going to be one guy that's going to take an attack on Wanalan, and then we're going to roll into initiative. So as he's picking the door, picking the lock, they, they decide they're just going to unlock it, and they're going to try to take a little advantage here. So one of them is going to, going to take. A sucker punch on Wanalan. Well, he's like on his knee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, prepared, prepared to be kicked. Right now, so. But even still, apparently the first one is a miss. But uh, probably this twenty-one will hit. Yeah, that's a. And bomb, Ooh. bomb him for for eight points of damage there. <sighs> and then uh, you can see there are two guys. Uh, th then th again, they all have this like gargoyle gilded gargoyle mascot the two guys right by the door and there are two inside the room uh, that and I need to get these two in Let's see do we have everything Donovan I've got the priest I got Taki I think everyone's on there I don't is Rareth on I there not Rareth I is on Oh, Rareth is over here. Okay. Oh, man. All right. So we begin with um, one of the monks here. The one that just opened the door is going to take two swings on one line. That'll miss. And the second one, a 22 to hit. Mm -hmm. Seven points of damage. And then it's Rarith's turn. And I will bonus action move the hunter's mark onto this uh, guy in the doorway. Sounds good. And we are going to shoot him. Uh, 15 to hit. 50. Okay, so uh, he basically grabs that arrow mid shot and just chucks it to the ground. A parry. Well, I'll shoot him again. Grab that one, pal. You can't do it twice, so you got him. So that's going to be 10 points of piercing damage. And then he's going to get a 
D8 since this is a new combat. And that's a two. I will get to re-roll that one. Do I get to re-roll that one? I don't think I do. That's not piercing damage for the Dread Ambusher attack, is it? What is the D8 from? Dread Ambusher. Uh, let's see. I guess it depends on if it says it, what its damage type is, huh? Uh, Does it say it says the, the same weapon damage of the attack? If you use that language, then it should be okay. Oh, yeah, and I... Dawson told me I've been doing this wrong the whole time. It's not just an extra D8 of damage. It's, a, it's an actual extra attack. So I actually get to take three attacks is what it is. Okay. So I'm just going to roll my third attack. There we go. Because it does say a D8 damage of the weapon's damage type, so it, it would be piercing. But it also says an extra damage attack, right? I have to roll a new attack roll Cor for it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that first one would be the 10 points plus... Uh, uh, plus... Um, Hunter's Mark? Hunter's Mark, yeah, let me give you that. All right, total of 14. All right. Okay. And then that was a 17 to hit on the um, yep, that'll hit. Dread Ambusher attack. Okay. And that one just gets a D8, not with my bonuses. But it's a 2, and I shall reroll it. Uh, six more points of damage. All right. He is still up. Um, but do you, would would you get Hunter's Mark on that? I, I th would think. The next extra attack. Okay. And that and will there's... bring him down. See you later. All right, that'll bring us to uh, one of the monks in the room. Step over his comrade here. Hit Wanalan, maybe. I was hoping for high initiative. Uh, that'll miss. And that'll oh. miss. Second one here. We'll just take the dodge action. All right, it is uh, Irden's turn. Irden will see while on challenge the situation, so he'll move over and cast another cooler light wound spell. Cast spell. Anyway. No. And Wyon will get eight. Eight points back. Eight back. So, and then he will move here to finish his move. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Donovan's turn. Okay. Donovan is going to move up here. And 
and he is going to ready an action that when Wanalyn falls back, he's going to step into his spots. Sounds good. Uh, then it's Wanalyn's turn. So he will disengage with his nose bleeding all over. He's going to move. All the way back over here. And I think I mean, he could probably attack with his short, or short bow. That one right in front of the door there that just punched him in the nose? Yeah. Sounds good. Nope. And we'll just leave it at that. Sounds good, and then Donovan steps in. And Donovan steps in to block. And then it is Taki's turn. Well, this time Taki is going to pull out his longbow. Don't know why I hit that twice. I apologize. All right, that hits. One to hit. Six points of damage. He'll take a second shot. And miss. All right. Thorwald. Thorwald. Uh, can I attack this guy from where I am? No, right? Uh, the, the This one you can. I can? Okay, then I will uh, see if I can hit this guy. And I will do so uh, with reckless with reckless abandon. So I'll give myself uh, advantage on this roll. So attack and advantage, but then if you attack me, you're going to have advantage on the roll. So the 20 to hit. Got him. And then damage is this. Is uh, 13 plus 9. So 22. He goes down. Peace. He goes down. Then Toe will step in. Uh, 10 to move here. See the other guy. And we'll just move a little bit more in and attack in the second time and still advantage because I don't get to only do it for one Ooh. and miss all right it is his turn uh, he's going to turn around he's going to try to take two swings at Thorwald with advantage with advantage mm-hmm There's one. And here's the second attack. Oh, critical. Oh, that's not good. It's not super impressive. <laughs> it did less than the normal. 15. Okay. All right. So I think in total you take, what, seven points? No, I wasn't raging. So oh, I, you're not raging. Oh, oh, yeah, gotcha. I'm gotcha. taking full 15. Yep. Yeah. Uh, That'll bring us to the top then in its rarest turn. Well, Rareth can't see anybody, so he's going to have to move. I can see this guy behind the wall. If I can see him, I can shoot him, right? Yes. Uh, bonus action, I'll move the hunter's mark over onto him. Uh, 24 to hit. That'll get him. So 
11 points of damage plus some hunter's mark damage uh, six right. more second shot Twenty-three to hit. You got him, and he goes down. Mm, that'll be it for me. All right, this last one from around the corner here moves out. Does a flip and tries to come over and get a dizzying. Display of fisticuffs is going to take a couple of swings at Thorwald. Still at advantage. I totally miscalculated the position. <laughs> but 19, 19 is misses. not a hit. And the second one misses as well. Uh, Irdan. Okay, Irdan. I cannot see that. I'll move temporarily to our world because otherwise I can't see it. The it sounds crazy, but it's this way. Uh, okay. Um, you're doing will anybody looks pretty injured? Probably not, right? So he will move in, and uh, okay. Now I can put myself back and here, and just see if he can eat this guy with his mace. Why not? Let's see how it works. Uh, mace. Attack. Normal. He hits. Oh wow! Look at that. He's gonna do six points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Awesome. Um, that'll bring <laughs> us to Donovan. Donovan steps forward. To here and uh, might as well go ahead and attempt to knock him to the ground. Uh, let's see, mm. manages to stay on his feet. Good, and I will, uh... But the blade connects. And... 13. Okay, he's still up. Uh, second attack. And that will drop him. So we're out of combat here. Uh, again, another room of these uh, woefully inept uh, monks that seem to have gathered here, uh, seemingly followers of the Black Earth. When you check them out, removing any of the gargoyle masks, they too have the same marking on their foreheads. Alex, does it, it might sound stupid, but does it look like the tattoo is recent for this folk so they you know because you can tell if because kind of row or i mean or these people have been in the cult so to speak for quite some time can we kind of make any extrapolation yeah i would say uh it's probably more more scarring than it is a true tattoo in there so there is some oh, okay. swollenness um at least two of them at least two of them seem to be more recent Probably in the past two weeks or so. Um, looking about the kitchen, there is a... There are coals, hot coals that are smoldering in this brick oven. Um, there's a smell of baking bread that fills the air. Around the room, sacks of flour... Casks of salted fish, crates of dried vegetables, and wheels of cheese clutter the walls, enough to be enough to feed 
probably two dozen, three dozen people for at least a week or two. Um, and then you can see there is a, a st window here that where sunlight is uh, peeking through. And a door here to the west, and another one around the corner. It looks like it's probably an exterior door. Alright. So this one goes goes out, you're saying, right? Yeah. Do we want to check this room here, guys, quickly? To the west? Uh, we might as well, yeah. Okay. Opening that up, you can see that it leads to a small washroom where there's a number mm -hmm. of tubs that are filled with uh, water. Alright. Just want to check it out one second. And it looks like a couple of the tubs have uh, laundry floating in them. They're, they're well organized. They've got everything. Uh, Thawa will take the moment just to uh, heal some of his wounds. I will do some healing of Angs uh, on the side. Yeah, Donovan will will uh, lay on hands on uh, Wanolin for uh, ten points. Well, that is, uh, let's move forward. All right. Uh, where is the group's destination next? Um, probably that other door. Hey, Alex, is it, is it all right to take five bio? Sure. Let's take a five minute bio break. We will be right back, folks. Uh, probably got about about an hour or so left in our, our play here tonight. And uh, so we'll step away for just a second. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Oh, and what a cool thing to come back to. Thank you for the follow, Holiday Born. Appreciate that. Thanks for stopping by here tonight. We're playing Princess of the Apocalypse. This is uh, basically session one of this series of adventures that we have going on here with our community campaign. This is our tier two uh, section of the community campaign. This is where upper level characters, levels five to, I think it's five to 10, uh, can come around for the second chapter of our Temple of Elemental Evil campaign. So our where we left off, our characters have uh, been inspecting the rumors of a uh, temple, a reformed monastery to St. Cuthbert, which is, I think at this point, uh, been found to be a fraud, just a front for, it would seem, a cult aligned with Elemental Earth to do some recruiting and kind of hide out in the open. And so they've busted down the doors and have been kicking ass all the way through uh, to this point. Um having made pretty much quick work of the rookie um, converts that the cult has managed to recruit. And so they had just left off. They had cleared out kind of the kitchen wing of the monastery and were thinking about heading, I think, more centrally through some some doors up over this way. Is that correct? Thanks, Holidayborn. I'm going to throw the Discord link there. You should come join us there and let us know if you're looking to play in a game sometime. Um, but yes, uh, feel free to, if you're heading up this way, move your tokens up that way. And who would be taking point to try to open the door there? You're probably Thorwald. 
I'm moving him there just in case. Or maybe I got it wrong. Are you guys heading down to the double doors down this way? Are we doing the other, the north door that had the little hallway? There's something or were wrong we... with my... Sorry. I can hear you. Okay, now I can hear you. Sorry. I think I had my thing muted. Were we going to go north or were we going to hit those double doors or south? No, no, whatever you guys want. Sorry, I, I misunderstood. If you go in there, uh, I'm definitely going to support you. Here, yeah. All right. So heading up, this is just just a like a small antechamber that seems to connect the kitchen to some other room that must lie beyond that wooden door. Can we hear anything from beyond door? Go ahead and give me a perception check. I think you can hear uh, some muffled conversation. You can't make out words, but you do. You are led to understand that there are some people on the other side of this door. Sort of echoey sounding, so you're getting the sense of a big room. How do we want to do this? Just uh, run in, guns blazing, or should we try to parlay? Try and parlay. I mean, not that I expect that they'll agree to parlay, but I feel like I don't know. Uh, Thorwell is kind of debating. Well, I think we should always give people a chance to yield to us. If they want to give up. Okay. But let's be you know, let's be ready. This is not like the situation at the door where we start with words and then we go to action. We're, we're going to action unless I don't know what unless what, but unless they throw their hands up, basically. Yes. Everybody on board with this plan? Yes. Donovan, are you gonna you're gonna speak to them? I I will try. Yes. All right. Uh, so Thorwald, are you or Donovan? You're throwing open the door. Yes. All right. The door opens, and you can see on the other side there are four columns of natural rock that dominate the center of this um, hall. Um, you can see there there is a monk with a gargoyle mask that is standing at the top of a landing which uh, descends downward. There's a, a wide staircase that descends down into darkness in the center of the room. Um, and I think you can even see... Well, maybe you can't quite see it yet. Um, but there's a voice that calls out to you as you open the door. Now, now! There's been a lot of fighting, I believe. Uh, come into the room. Let's uh, have a talk. And it's, it sounds like the voice is coming from, like, the opposite side of this uh, pillar of stone here. Follow me. I'll move up to here. And feel free to kind of bring your guys in, you know... Um, in, into the room where you'd like and you can see on the opposite side of the that staircase there is uh, some kind of a stone slab that serves as an altar uh, where there are uh, on either side there are two armored men in plate mail uh, has sort of a kind of a rocky form 
uh, to it. It seems like it's intentionally stylized to look like boulder or rock material. Um, and on the other side of that altar, there is a man that is standing with a, a kind of ceremonial helm. Um, wearing uh, chain mail. And holding a uh, staff. Seems like kind of a priestly kind of garb. And uh, above the altar behind him on the wall is carved into the stonework that triangular shape of the, the cult symbol. And uh, he just sort of gestures to you. You are champions of St. Cuthbert. You've no doubt come here hoping to find followers that belong to your faith. That is correct. You will find none here. Did you use the name of St. Cuthbert? You are Im imposters of the faith, yet you speak as though you carry the name of St. Cuthbert in your teachings. Explain yourself. Well, um, certainly we do not follow St. Cuthbert, and uh, you know what? I am embarrassed. Downright embarrassed that we have to live with this charade. I wish it were that we could openly state who we worship. The great Lord Theris Dune. Who soon will be untethered and unchained. We will deliver that promise to him, that prize. When Ogremok walks the earth. Then we will see. Then we will see if your St. Cuthbert can protect you. Where is Sargon? Says Thorwald. And I'm sorry. Friend of yours? Maybe he's working down in the mines with the other dregs. Yes, we probably put him to work. Digging for us. Your cult ends now. Lay down your weapons, or you'll be put to the sword by the righteous wrath of St. Cuthbert. And you can see the, the two guards, like, pull out. They've got these, like, heavy war maces that they pull out, and the priest kind of grabs with both hands his, uh, his staff, and he says, ah, so be it. And... This guy gets into a fighting stance and will roll into initiative here. Give me one second to set it up. Gonna end the previous one. All right, go ahead and roll yourselves in there. I made this guy much more comical during my first uh, playthrough. <laughs> my fir the first time I ran this, the group, uh, they, they tried to infiltrate by pretending to be Dark Earth cultists, and this this guy would make, he made, they would give, I had him give everybody, like, chores to do, like, doing the laundry and, like, changing the bedpans, and one of the characters had to give this guy a sponge bath every night, and it was it was truly kind of torture for them for a couple of days as they <laughs> gathered some information, but <laughs> we're getting right into the action here. 
So we're going to start things off. It looks like Tacky is at the top of the order. Okay, he's going to pull out his great sword and move over here and start welling on this dude. Oh, and he's going to... Uh, we have rerolls? You got three rerolls. Yeah, he's going to have to use one. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Taki! Let's see. All right, ranged attack. Split a seam. Uh-oh, a piece of clothing or armor you are wearing is damaged. Uh, what does he wear for armor? He's got, like, plate, doesn't he? Uh, I believe so, yes. So, uh, it... You know, Taki's been around some about a decade or so. He's probably never done a whole lot of maintenance. He's cut a lot of corners on that piece of plate mail, and so it's starting to kind of... There's a rend that is finally uh, starting to, like, kind of come up the side of, like, the breastplate. And so, on every subsequent attack roll, there's a 25% chance that the item will split further. So we'll oh, just no. have to remember that. All right. Well, he's he's going to swing again. All right. Sounds good. All right. That's that, a little better. That'll hit. Uh, does not rend any further. And he's going to re-roll that one. Is it a grip, we grip weapon uh, fighting style? Yes. Like this is like his like one thing that he's got. Okay, so that's a five. What was the other rolls? Let's see. Is that another five? So it should be a fourteen, right? If I get it right. That's what I got. Ten, ten plus four, yes, fourteen. Cool. Uh, so. Big slashing motion forward, cuts right through the chest of this uh, figure. Uh, he's bleeding something fierce, but he's still up. And that's all for Taki. The um, guard right here. Is going to move forward and just leap over. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he could do that. He's going to leap over the stair and get to bam right here. He's going to get to the other side of Taki and take a swing with his Morning Star. First one misses. Second attack is also going to miss. Yes. Uh, Thorwald. Thorwald will uh, bring the fight to the main guy. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Bonus section, rage, and attack this guy. The other guard. Oh, do we have a rolls? You do. do I left. don't want. I don't want that crit. So I'm gonna roll it. All right, ah, that'll hit. Much better. Much better. So the damage is going to be this plus two. So 14 
plus this. So 20 total. 20 total. And then second swing. Normal attack. Who? Mm. Jeez Louise. Okay. Um, what should I do, guys? Should I keep it? Because I'm going to be using it last three rolls. What do you guys think? Use it. I'm Use fine. it? You're using it, yep. Okay. So we're rolling. Jeez, I've seen so many ones tonight. <laughs> Oof. At least it's not a crit miss. Yeah. And that's it. All right. Uh, the monk right here is going to step back and attack Taki. Seventeen, I believe, misses. Miss. And twenty-three will hit, dealing six points of damage. The priest, Werbo, just says, "Forget him." To the lever. And you can see the guard here uh, moves past you, Thorwald. Moves out of your reach. Can I swing? Yes. Okay, I will swing at him. How many ones can I roll tonight? Let's see. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make it count. That's a lot of damage coming. That's a lot of damage. Oh, man. But it's only a nine, but there are four D sixes coming as well. So let me see. Two, three, four. Is that how it works? Nope. Not this way. How do I do four D sixes? I don't know. Anyway, I'll roll twice. Four. Jeez, what roll? Anyway, nine plus nine, 18 points of damage. Oh, he's got one hit point left. <laughs> <laughs> so he makes it over this le this lever, and he basically just falls on it because he's like so beat up. But as he does so, Donovan, the floor underneath you gives way, and the stairway here folds up, almost like an attic kind of thing. So it folds up into the ceiling of the layer below you, and you drop down. Um, I'm going to move you basically to another map quick. So you'll be popping up. Oh, I almost nailed it. So it's going to be on, like, the bottom of this map, so if you scroll down, eventually you should see where you drop down. This would be right here. Um, so the stairway that you see there is not currently there. Um, you'll take a little bit of fall damage. I do not see anything. Um, how can I? I do now. Oh, you do. Okay. Um, let me just double check this. Okay, it's like a... You'll take 10 points of fall damage as you drop. Um... Okay. It is, um... It is basically dark in this room. There's a bit of dim light that comes from the hole in the ceiling, which is 15 feet overhead. So you just sort of get like a very general, like you can kind of in the shadows see parts of this room. Um, it looks like there's kind of like rough red stone, like dirt basically, um, right in front of you off the, uh, the, um, 
I guess, constructed uh, stone tile in front of you. And you get the sense that there's like some kind of a cage over here. And you see this big lumbering figure contained within. And there's a door or the, the door to the cage kind of rustily opens up and it swings open. Seems like in time with that lever from up above. Mm. A little bit of Return of the Jedi here. Yeah. And that is that for the guard's turn. It's Rarest's turn now. Okay, I'm moving my hunter's mark on to the guy over next to uh, Taki. The monk next to Taki. And... 16 to hit. That will hit. Nine points. Uh, let's see. He goes down. No, no. That's oh. That's only that's only five points. Five points. Okay, he's still up. Okay, so we'll give him his hunter smart damage. Okay, he goes down. I'll use my second attack on the Black Earth Guard next to Taki. That'll hit. To hit. Uh, for nine points of damage. All right. Next up is Wanalan. Um, hold up, I've got one more attack. Okay. This is the first uh, first attack in this combat. So. Twenty-two to hit. That'll hit. And we'll give him eleven more points of damage. Sounds good. He's. Looking, he's still looking okay. Um, Wanalan's turn. Okay. Wanalan is going to use his short bow to shoot this guy. That one will miss. Hmm. <clears throat> and it's going to go up now one thing well actually on his thing which he's roguish but he's got action surge I don't know if that's supposed to be on there it is yeah he's like he's like a hybrid he's like kind of a fighter thief I guess okay he is going to action surge and uh, fire his bow again Whoops, I Come on. And uh who is this against again? This guy over here. Oh, okay. Uh that'll miss. Yeah, that's what I thought. Damn it. Okay. Um That's I think that's it. All right, that'll bring us to Donovan. And so, um, okay. let me just, I'm going to basically draw a square. 
This is going to represent like where you've got light. Okay. And so it's it's a dim light, but anything outside of this is basically um darkness. And so you just kind of hear, and you can, you can sense that there's the lumbering of a large creature off to the, the west. Okay, let me see if I can see this. I don't see it again. It kind of disappeared on me. I don't see anything. You, you may have to, like, I don't know, click... Oh, I know what I'm... Because you might go. still be um, on the other token, probably. Yep. Okay, so I have dim light here, and I can make out this shape on the outside, right? Yeah. Okay, well. Under the circumstances beings I know that that thing is there but I can't really see it I am casting moonbeam to give me light and to uh, encompass it cool so you're dropping that like in the darkness where you, where you sense the creature is at yeah, pretty much like okay. right here, kind of right at the edge or whatever. All right. So, so as you do that, then you 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 can see um, through that darkness at uh, I think a creature that is I don't know if Donovan has encountered this before, but um, big, huge ape-like body. Sort of a beetle-like face with wicked mandibles. Powerful claws and four eye sockets, but two of its eyes have been put out. It almost looks like melted away. And its claws are... It looks like they have been augmented with metal. Um... They don't look like natural claws. They look like they're cast in bronze. Interesting. And extra dangerous. And uh, we'll deal with the moonbeam then at the start of its turn. Uh, we'll go to Brother Iridon. Brother Eardon will rush to this guy and see if he can hit him with his uh, St. Cuthbert mace. Because that's what he does. That's what he does. If Magnus was here, he would uh, come out with some clever rhyme about this, but I'm not. So, and he rolls a two, so <laughs> really not the feel. But that's what he does. Just clangs against the armor of that one there. All right. Well, as if your day couldn't get any worse, to the south, these doors open up. And you can see there are four monks there, um, along with a woman who has a blindfold on. And the priest up at the altar just says, Ah, Helen Ray, not a moment too late. We need your help, mas mistress. These Cuthbertines are causing a disturbance. And he's going to move. Uh, he's going to move a bit away here. The corner. And he's going to cast... going to cast Shatter. Okay. 
to get Irdan and Thorwald. So that'll be a DC 13 constitution saving throw. Okay, let's start with Irdan. Saving throw. Normal. So Irdan makes it. Nice. And Thorwald. Ah, uh, tonight I'm really rolling like shoes. Okay, Thorwald does not make it. All right, it's a total of 14 points of thunder damage, so 7 to Iridon and 14 to Thorwald. Mm -hmm. And he's raging, but he takes full 14. And that'll bring us to the top, and it is Taki's turn. <laughs> Taki is going to swing at this uh, Black Earth Guard next to him here. Uh, 13, I don't think will hit. That one will not hit. Nothing more to the armor. Second attack, also a miss. Nothing to the armor. And that's Taki's turn. All right. Umber Hulk in the chamber. Mm -mm. Constitution con save, right? For Moonbeam. Yeah. And a 17. Take half. Yes. Did we did we have uh, damage on that? Oh, it was oh uh, was nine, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, it was the, nine when early. I when I cast it, it was nine earlier. Yeah. Okay, but. sounds good. Uh, the creature then starts to lumber out. It moves up and is just roaring as it does. And it's kind of like raking its claws against one another and it moves in to take a couple of swings at you let's see two attacks with the claws and one with the mandibles first one misses 22 that just hits all right that one will be 14 points of damage And miss. Back to the top. Black Earth Guard. Uh, the one over by Taki. Swing at him with the Morning Star. Uh, 14 will miss. Second attack. Will also miss. You know what? I didn't roll these guys in. Okay, good. Nobody nobody was above that initiative count, so not too big of a mistake. Um, so that's his turn. He makes the two swings at Taki. His armor's holding up. It's protecting him against these otherwise wicked blows. Um, but the next up is Helen Ray. This seemingly um, this blindfolded monk. She's going to move into the room. Oops. Here we go. 5, 10. Yep. 
he gets up to where Rareth is. And she's going to do some unarmed attacks. Okay, a 23 to hit. Yes. And she's going to make this a stunning strike. It'll do 14 points of damage. And then a constitution saving throw. And you make it. Second attack. He goes for a high kick. 24 to hit. Hits. Five points of damage. And then she's going to go for a palm strike. A 19 to hit. Also hits. Six points of damage. There's just a flurry, a barrage of damage from, uh, I would say a fairly petite looking woman, um, who, like her whole appearance just makes you, uh, like, you're just judging on her appearances, looks blinded, doesn't, looks rather frail, but as soon as she starts moving, it's, like, encountering one of the maybe most highly trained monks, uh, no, no, no offense to Good Yang, but um, she's she could probably spar with him no problem. Um, Thorwald, it is your turn. Thor really want to go after the priest, but he cannot get to him. So we will have to uh, be content with uh, trying to bash this guy's head in. Come on tonight. I'm being cursed tonight. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's okay. Ah, uh, you got him. And he only has the one hit point, so you're going to oh, be able yeah, to yeah. take him down. Okay, so I was here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's all he can do this turn. All right. Uh, let's see, one of the monks coming into the room. Gets to right here, takes the dodge action. Uh, Rareth, it is your turn. Uh, Rareth is going to drop his bow and pull out his dagger. And attempt to stab this monk. Twenty-four to hit. Yes, that'll hit. I'm gonna re-roll the one. some reason I can't get it show me the breakdown of the original damage let's see the the d4 was it must have been the one right so uh, eight points total yes okay uh, no the one okay never mind it was seven points of damage it's still rolling that favored bow damage seven points that gotcha. was the one all right. Um, and I didn't bonus action to move the uh, hunter's mark, but I will now. 
and I will stab her again. And that's a 16. 16. She'll use her parry uh, to add a bit to her AC against that one. Um, I'm good with uh, if you want to say that you had moved the Hunter's Mark prior to your action. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. You could roll your d6 for that first one. Ooh, one more point of damage. Every little bit helps. Cool. Uh, anything else? That'll be it for now. All right, Wanalan. Wanalan will shoot at this person right here with his short bow. I think I get sneak attack right on that. If I yes. Hit. Mm hmm. Not quite. Garbage. And he is going to move up here uh, to help out if uh, to lift that lever once it. Okay. Yeah, we'll say it's an action. I think I made it an action for the guard, so we'll say it's an action to do it. Okay. Um. Cool. Uh. Donovan's turn. All right, Donovan. Let's see. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. Okay, so uh, first things first, Donovan's going to try and knock this thing down, test its strength. All right. And does poorly. <sighs> we just <laughs> hit right into it. It's like running into a right. wall. Right. Um, so he is going to attack. Sixteen. Will not quite make it. Doesn't make it. And again. That one does. Okay, and he is going to expend a second level spell slot to add Divine Smite on there because I got a feeling I'm in a bad way here. All right, so 10. Uh, let's see. Total of 20 points, or, oh. No. Uh, oop, oop. There we go. I think that's... Sorry, I'm... Uh... That second one was only supposed to be a single die. Okay, just go ahead and roll on uh, another one. Yeah, it... Yeah, I didn't see that it had rolled, and I hit that one twice, so... All right, 26 points total. 26 total, yes. All right. Cut right into the the carapace of this large creature. It's kind of oozing forth a bit, but um, pretty hardy creature, so it's going to take a few more of those. Sure. And that'll bring us back up to the top. Um, the monks here. Another one moves in, 5, 10, 15, 30. Moves in there, takes the dodge. This one will get up into the spot and aid his mistress. Take two swings at Rareth. 15 to hit. 
just hits. Five points. And a miss. All right. Irdan's turn. Okay. Irdan is combated between pulling the lever or try to help Loreris down there. So he will say to Warnilo, Warnilo, can you pull that lever? And he will start casting some arcane magic. And you see that from his hands spring forth some kind of uh, spirits in the shape of uh, cudgels. And I start floating around him. He's cast Spirit Guardians. At third level. And so... I'm gonna place this template here, but it actually follows him. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a 15 sphere around him. And then he will move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he will have designated everybody in the party uh, not to be affected by it. So basically, only enemies will be affected by these Spirit Guardians. Helen Ray makes it. And the monk fails. So, damage is normal for the monk. Did I roll 22? Wow. 22, okay. No, no, there's some, there's some problem. I don't think it's 22. It's uh, only 12. 12, it, it, okay. It comp compacted it together. So it's 12 points of radiant damage. Well, it still will take this monk down. Why did... Oh, yes. So the reason is because <laughs> they were... Sp I don't know. It, your characters wouldn't know this, but these guys were all sparring to with one another earlier, so he had already taken some damage from oh. uh, some dojo practice. So <laughs> the 12 is enough to take him down. Awesome. Uh, he did movement action. I don't think he's got any uh, bonus action, so he will end his turn there. All right. And I guess I, I should, I, I should have waited until the start of their turn to have that happen, but we're just going to resolve it right now. Have that for the first round at least. Um, yes, so the next person up is going to be this last priest here. Five, ten. Not priest, monk. And he'll take the dodge action. Uh, now it's the priest's turn. The sacred stone priest here. And he will cast. I'm gonna try to cast slow on Thorwald. It'll be a oh wait. You alter time for up to six creatures of your choice in a forty foot cube. So he'll place it there. So this will affect Wanalon, Thorwald, and Taki. Wisdom saving throws. Uh, of course I fail. All Just right. Not... Looks like everybody fails. So, an affected so target it... speed is halved. Takes a minus two penalty to armor class and dex saves. You can't use reactions. On your turn, you can use either an action or a bonus action, but not both. Regardless of the creature's abilities or magic items, it can't make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Okay, how does it work with my ring of reaction? Because it says that I can't, my speed cannot be magically reduced. So in that sense, you're I, fine. Your speed would be fine. But all the other stuff still applies. Okay, got it. Minus I see deck save. And then what is that? Oh, I cannot make reaction. Okay. And then you make wisdom saving throws at the end of each of your turns to oh, potentially okay. end. 
though. Awesome, awesome. I remember that. Uh, then Corbo will move 5, 10, 15. He'll move to down here. Uh, brings us to the top of the round Taki's turn. Yay, Taki. I guess, I sorry, I should have had you roll a d6. Fail. Five or six. Okay, no problem there. And then he's going to roll his save. What was it? The Constitution saving throw? Yes. Wisdom. Or wisdom. Yeah, wisdom. All right, he's golden. We'll go down to Yay. the Umber Hulk here. Three attacks against Donovan. 20, I believe, misses. 16, I believe, misses. I know that misses. I think 22 is the magic number, right? So all these fail. 20. 22 is the magic. Uh, back to the top. Uh, Black Earth Guard is going to attack Taki. Uh, 16 maybe hits now. Or no, no, he just uh, got unslowed. Alright, those miss. Helen Ray is up next. Have to see if her thing recharges. It's not. She's gonna take um, a couple swings here against Rareth. Seventeen. Yes. Thirteen points. I drop and pop back up with one hit point. <gasps> Second attack misses, and the third attack a sixteen hits. Eleven points. Rare is down. Thorwald. Okay, so my speed is unaffected. So how do you rule me jumping over this thing? Uh, you could do that. Okay, five, ten. This difficult terrain, that one square. Which one? This one? Just the, the one square that is the um, altar. Okay, so ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. God Dang. Well. Five, ten, fifteen. I'll do the dash action at this point, and at the end of my round, I will do the save. And it's a wisdom. Let me throw normal. Oh, come on. Got it. Okay. Awesome. And that's my round. All right. Uh, sacred. One of the monks. 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to move up right here. Try to hit Taki. Miss. And... Miss Rareth's turn. Where are the death saving throws on? Uh, I First think it's page. 
It's like it's really tiny somewhere on the f attributes page. Uh, yes, right under your favorite foe, you've got some things there. Like the very first line under that is death saves. You can click that. It should prompt like a the pop out to roll. That's on Beyond or on... Oh, um, oh uh, I, I thought you were looking on the Foundry. Um, I don't really know on the D&D Beyond. You can just throw a D20 in the chat. All right, one success. Wanalan. Wanalan... Uh, is slowed so very slowly he grabs the uh, lever and uh, raises it or lowers it whatever was the opposite sure yeah raises it up and uh, from behind you Donovan you can hear like the, you could feel like the whooshing of the staircase like hinging back down into place and that uh you could hear the closing of that metallic, uh, that, that cell gate clanging shut. Okay. And then, uh, Wanalan can do that wisdom save. He's even slower somehow. <laughs> <laughs> that seems on brand for Wanalan. Uh, yeah. Donovan's turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll down to him. Okay, so the uh, so the thing opened up. Yes. The stairs opened <laughs> up. And the door closed that it came out of the thing that it came out of yeah it closed and then the stairs opened oh okay um well i will once again try and knock it down now that i know how uh how heavy it is Try and brace my feet differently and fail. So, uh, two more attacks. That hits. Okay, I will expend a saving throw. Or, no, I'll expend a saving throw. I'll expend a spell slot. First level to if I can find there it is. If, uh, so eighteen points eight total. 18 points total and then the second attack that one misses yeah and that'll be uh, that'll be it for now all right, uh, the monk. Hmm, one second. Okay, this one here moves up. So there's three on Taki now, let's see. <laughs> Nobody can hit him. Miss and miss. 
All right, Eardon's turn. Okay, Eardon is gonna move clo one step closer to Rarith and is gonna pump some life into him. He's gonna expand his last remaining third level spell slot to burn a Q wounds at third level. So spell slot, third, cast spell. And hopefully should do it at the right level. Let's see. Normal. Yep. I see the 3d8s. So it takes uh, th 13 hit points. Awesome. And uh, he's moved a little bit of 15 feet radius, but it doesn't affect anybody else yet. So that will be his turn. Perfect. Just remind me of Helen Ray uh, needs to do that yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, this monk moves over here. He's going to attack Thorwald. Ooh. I don't got rerolls. Uh oh. I don't think we do either. Feeble. You do not add your. Damage bonus to your next attack. That's a stupid one. Should have one. Choose untied. Okay, every time you move until the end of combat, there's a 50% chance you will lose your shoe. Okay. <laughs> what are these? Apparently when I draw, they're going to be silly. Okay, we'll, we'll stack those. Both of those are in play for that guy. <laughs> uh, let's see. That was his... First swing, we'll see. Oh god. <laughs> Tonight it's a night of Oh no. <laughs> yes. We'll add a third card for this poor guy. My bad. Reroll this attack with advantage against an ally within five feet of you and the original target. Okay. So we're gonna say this. So he's gonna like he's like fumbling around and he like loses his shoe and then he decides He's going to use that and, like, try to do, like, this high kick. So he's going to go and do, like, a running leap and, like, totally miss you and then end up here and potentially swing his foot right in Corbo's face. So reroll the attack with advantage against... Okay. And he crits Corbo in the face. <laughs> It's crazy. All right, so six points of damage to the priest. Um, is anybody still under the? Yeah, Wanalan's still under the slow, right? So I gotta do con check here. Okay, slow is still in play, but uh, Corbo gets belligerent and uh, starts yelling and berating this novice monk for. Uh, Big misstep and Corvo is up and he's like, you fool. If we should get out of this, you'll be the first one that we feed to the eye. And uh, he is going to attempt. Oh, I do. He'll cast Earth Tremor. So, Thorwald, give me a dex save. I have danger sense, and I can see him, so I'll take this uh, with advantage. It's something that Barbarian Sickle level get. Sounds good. Be sure. Dexterity, saving throw, advantage. Hopefully I'm not going to roll the one. No problem, you make it. Nothing happens to you. Just a little okay. kind of tremor right in the spot where you're at. Uh, that'll bring us to the top. Taki's turn. Taki's oh, currently get... tanking. <laughs> he, he's going to get to uh, take two attacks this time since he's not uh, slowed anymore. Fourteen's not going to hit the um, Black Earth Guard. Nope, that that'll miss. He'll try again. 
Eh, that'll miss. Stalemate over here. Nobody can hit anybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's hope that continues because we're going to go down back into the sub level here. Umber Hulk takes its three attacks. The augmented claw miss. Miss, and then the mandibles. All right. Still holding his own is Donovan. Black Earth Guard up top is going to take a swing at Taki. Miss. And miss. Uh, Helen Ray is up. She's gonna. Sh uh, she's got to do wisdom save. The the C sorry. The the C thirteen wisdom save. Uh, she'll make it, so she'll take half. Of this. No, 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 not the, not this. Okay. Disregard that. My bad. Here we go. All right. Of this, only five. So she takes a bit of damage, but her attention is squarely on Brother Iridon as she moves up. She is going to take a few swings. <laughs> of course. A high kick, twenty-six to hit. Oh, that uh, hits. Five points of damage. Okay. Let's do fifteen. 11 misses 11 misses and then another 26 but 26 she, definitely is. she goes for a headbutt 12 points of damage Ooh, he's barely up he's barely up. but anyway i have to make two uh concentration it's concentration right yep yep so uh, attributes constitution saving throw normal uh good? what the first one is good but gotta do a second one with a lot more points of damage and that goes down drops yeah. uh thorwald's turn thorwald's turn okay so he will do with reckless abandon try to fell quarba the priest the evil priest okay let's see what i can do Attack. Advantage. Hits. And then the damage is going to be... 14 plus... 317 plus I'm going to add his might to this. So I'm going to add a first level might. So that's going to add to the eights. So that's a grand total of 14, 17, 27, 32 points of damage. He's still up, but barely. And then I'm going to attack him again. Still with advantage. Yep, you got him. 21. And then it's going to take a lot. Uh, let's see. Actually, not a lot. 9 plus this. 9 plus 6, 15 points of damage. He goes down. So you got the caster out of the mix. And that's my turn. Let me think. Do I want to move... No, I'll stay there. All right, a couple of swings to Taki. Uh, 22 to hit. That's a hit. It is eight points of damage. And miss. Rarest turn. Uh, Rarest going to stand up and be stabby stabby. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, all right. Nothing she can do about that. Oh, 
Okay. So this is going to be... and the two. And there's still a one and a two. So six plus four, ten. And I'll take a second stab. Twenty-three to hit. That'll hit. What was the total damage on the first attack? 10 points. 10 points, okay. And that'll be 7 points. All right. All right, sounds good. Wanalan is up. You no longer slowed, Wanalan. Monolin bonus actions to dash moves up there uh, is going to attack with short sword on her uh, doesn't get advantage right Nope. Just... Oh, gosh. So, um, misses. I think that is it. All right, Donovan's turn. In the Rancor pit. Yes. I'm trying to decide, do I disengage and move up with this thing? Or stay engaged with it? I don't know what's going on upstairs, but the thing is open. Let's see. But the last thing I need to do is let this thing come up and kill one of my friends. Uh... I'll hold it off one more, one more turn. So I will uh, once again try to knock it prone. Ooh, that's a possibility. All right, you knock it Ooh. off its feet. It is down in front of me, so I will attack it twice with advantage is a hit there's 12 and again Eighteen is what you need. For another twelve. All right. He's looking rough at this point. Um, a couple of quick stabs through the chest. He's oozing out um, this kind of brackish, dark green fluid. And it's looking like it's taking some effort for him to get, climb back up onto his feet. All right. That, I, yeah. So it's down, right? It is down. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and use my movement to go 30 feet up so it can take an attack at me from prone. But, uh... 
I'm gonna try and get, get up the stairs. We'll give them disadvantage on that. They all miss. Okay. So I will move 30 feet up. I don't know if I can get onto the other map or not. Yeah. But... Um. Here I can. I can do that. Over to. We'll say it is. At least now. Oops. Overshot it. We'll say it is 10 feet to get to right there. Okay. Or, uh, uh, 15, 15 feet. We'll say 15 feet. 15 feet to right there. Then I will continue to hear. And I will tell Taki that there's some shit coming up the stairs. <laughs> so <laughs> sounds good. Get uh, it out of the way, you know. Uh, this one right here is going to continue attacks on Taki. Miss and miss. Irdan's turn. Eden's got three hit points. Uh, how is... Not well? Um... Yes, how is Rare? Oh, yep. Um, Rareth is uh, still pretty bad shape, but more than three. More than three, okay. Then he will... Cast... A second spell, second level, cure wounds on himself. I think he doesn't want to go down. That would be stupid. So he will cure himself for nine hit points, going back to 12. And that's his turn, because he doesn't want to move and provoke. So, yeah. All right, the monk over by Thorwald, two swings, a miss, and... Advantage. He has oh, it's, it's advantage. advantage. Okay, this first one is yeah. a miss, and then second swing. Uh, oh, a crit. And rolls yeah. nine points. I'm raging at least. So All that's right. actually four. Hockey's turn. Well, Taki heard Donovan... But there's not really much he can do about it. So he's going to uh, swing that greatsword. There's a crit. Nice. Oh, looks like there's a couple rerolls in there. <laughs> yeah, Three of them. He had three ones there. All right. Uh, let's see, seventeen total. Yeah. This one goes down. Now move. Perfect. So he'll move to there, and then he'll attack the one to his right with his second uh, swing. Sounds good. Nice. That's a hit. All right. This one is still up, but bleeding out. And the big... Oh, uh, maybe oh. not. Still up. Uh, yeah. So replace the one with the six. Okay, this one's going down. And that's all he can do. All right. So uh, lumbering up the stairs is the Umber Hulk, and upon seeing 
with its two good eyes, that monk there with the gargoyle mask seems to go into a frenzy and charges right at him. Claw attack. Um, the monk manages to grab the claw and kind of push it down away from his body. Second claw coming at him. Hits him from the opposite side, swiping across his body. Ten points of damage. He goes down. And then it turns its mandibles towards Donovan. Uh, 21 misses. This misses, yeah. And then it's Helen Ray's turn. Helen Ray goes for a high kick at Eardon. She wants him dead. Oh, wow. And that's going to miss. Sorry, I got to re-roll. Not re-roll. I got to roll to see if she gets her ability back. She does not. Uh, second attack against Eardon. 19 to hit. Oh, yeah. He's got 13, so super hit. <laughs> Seven points. Seven. Five left. And her third attack is an 18. That's a hit, and probably goes down. Yep, he's down. Kicks him in the temple, and he drops like a sack of potatoes to the ground. Thorwald. Thorwald will attack with reckless abandon the uh, monk next to him. He definitely won't be down with that. Seventeen. Uh, that'll hit. And he takes nine plus this plus four, thirteen points of damage. Or you drop him. And then I will come next to this monster here, and I will attack him again. Uh, uh, also, still with reckless abandon. No, oh, man, that was a 20. That hits. That's what you need. Okay. And then, so the damage is going to be... Jeez, what I'm rolling tonight. 8 plus... 7, so that's 15. I'm going to add to it another smite. No, no. And the smite is coming. Here we go. So 15 plus 11, 26 points of damage. Thor. How do you finish this guy? I'm coming from the back. He's already uh, like half chewed away by Donovan. I I put his word from the back through his heart and they just take it out. Beast roars with that as uh, you pull the vital organ out and its big carcass drops to the ground. Nice. And that'll bring us to Rareth. Rareth's going to take his chance with um, getting an attack of opportunity. He's going to grab his bow and back up. All right. Let's see. Twenty four. Nine points of damage. And he is going to fire. Twenty six to hit. Hits. Mm. 
nine points of damage. Second shot, 16. That one... She will uh, block the missile as it comes within inches of her face. And that will be all. Uh, Wanalan's turn. He will attack her from uh, with his short sword. Hey, I think I hit. Yes, she can't parry twice, so you got her. And uh, sneak attack too. Uh, sneak attack. On the yeah, the ear ear down's still up. So. Oh okay. Okay, that's weird. I don't know what that is? Zero. Oh. Uh, no, no he, he then is down, uh, Alex. What's up? He oh, then is down. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So it's just in the nine points. That is still nine points of damage. So. Apparently the dice knew. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I rolled zero. <laughs> So. Zero. Wow. Uh, cool. So that's Wanlon's turn. Then it's Donovan's turn. Okay. Uh, Donovan gives Thorwald, you know, the thumbs up or the big trouble in Little China. Good job taking him down. And steps over here and is going to attack. And hopefully. End her. 22 hits. Ten. And the next attack. And that hits. And we'll throw a smite in for good measure. Uh... Fifteen total. Uh, fifteen total. All right, she is still standing. Irdan's turn. He will make a. Uh, where is my? Oh, it's an NPC. I don't have the the death save, hmm. so I will just roll the d twenty. Okay. Now I I do have a question on this, just in case it comes into play. Uh, anybody within 10 feet of me gets plus 3 on their saving throws. Oh. Is a death saving throw? Yes. So. For my aura protection? Okay. So he makes one success. Nice. Well, uh, I guess it's oh, not I, mean, I guess it's not a saving throw, but it, he still gets a success. Okay. One of those terminology things where they, yeah, they probably should have named it something different. Um, okay, Taki's turn. Death save is a saving throw? I, I don't know, because you don't add anything to it. Well, I, I'm going to say it's not, I guess, uh, for, for my purposes. Taki's going to move over here and see if he can hit her. Not with that one. Not with that one. But maybe with that one. 18 hits. Do it. This would be a big uh, thing to add on to Taki's resume. And 12, 12 points. points done. How does it end? <laughs> he just stuck the great sword right in between Wanalon and Donovan and skewered it right through her neck. And as he released that and she's kind of gurgling on the blood, she's choking. He hasn't said a word this entire time, but she just says, I happily die for Lareth, the champion of elemental earth. I'll do. 
and she expires and it is silent in th within the monastery uh Donovan steps over and uh lays hands on Irdun giving him what do I have here just some uh he'll give him the full 20 is much better. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah, Rareth's going Thank to uh, cast a healing spell on himself. Do we believe that's all the enemies? Um, you uh, up here in the monastery. You know, you don't, there's no more waves, like you wait, you know, a few minutes here, uh, catching your breath and whatnot, but nobody else enters in. Now, I would say, Donovan, you were down those stairs, and it definitely seems like kind of rough rock, like it had very roughly been chipped away and carved away, uh, by pickaxes and whatnot, and so it, it would seem there's some kind of excavation that is happening below uh, deck here. Something that will take much more exploration to kind of suss out what what is actually going on uh -huh. here beneath this old dwarven structure. Um, but you'll be able to take this information back uh, to Burn and share with him that, of course, what you suspected was probably the case is true that the monastery was uh, just a front for uh, Black Earth cult activities. And so there is a way forward for further exploration here, or uh, future groups will be able to check out any of those other leads that uh, had been um, dug up uh, during the exploration of Rastor earlier. So um, well, they, were, they were probably using the Umber Hulk to dig, would be my guess. Well, Quarbo was mentioning slaves in the mines. I mean, I'm not sure it's necessarily here, but could be. Could be. So uh, we will we will wrap things up there with you all probably licking your wounds a little bit here and then um, heading back to share what you have found. Maybe get reinforcements. You don't know what kind of force you might be looking at dealing with down below. Um so thanks everybody for hanging out with us here tonight. It is, um, this has been a piece of our community campaign where we invite people that enjoy watching us, enjoy um, hanging out with us, watching our streams to come and get in a game themselves. If you ever want to check out any of these, get signed up for a game, just jump into our Discord server there and uh, drop a message in the lobby and we'll hook you up with the details on how to get a uh, get into a game and uh, if you really like what we're doing and you want to support the channel you can do that with our patreon page I'll link that as well uh, everything that we uh, take in for the patreon kind of goes to support this whole experience the community campaign experience so uh, you can check that out too um, I guess another way you could support would be with extra life we're doing some extra life um, fundraising here this month of November. It's not November. Next month's November. Next month is Extra Life Month. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and rob ourselves of an October. So, but next uh, month, November 5th, we'll be doing an Extra Life game. We will be playing the original Castle Ravenloft module using Old School Essentials for 12 hours. That'll be a lot of fun. So come and check us out there. Um... And now, a very special request. We're going to shoot a raid over to Fred Bob. If you don't know Fred Bob, he will sing you a song of whatever you want. And he plays the keyboard. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, he's trying to get affiliate right now. So we'll do the raid and do us a favor and follow his channel to help him out uh, with that goal. So let's do this. Let's raid him. Thanks, everybody for hanging out. We'll see y'all soon. Thanks all.